How's it going, you guys? It's the end of the day here, and I wanted to go over 10 of my favorite garden tools. <sighs> so this is probably one of my favorite videos that I'm gonna do. I am very passionate about the tools that I bring onto the property and that I use, and for them to make it on this list means that they have had to be put to the test. I use and abuse any tool that I have in the garden more than it should be. <laughs> so if it's on this list, it means that I have used it, I have abused it, and um, I have used it probably the improper way and it is still held up to the test of time. So this is my list of 10 items that I think every gardener should have. So we're gonna start with number 10 and that is my pop-up bag that I have. It's from Fiskars, I absolutely love this thing. I use it all the time, it is massive. I like the one that has the hard shell on the bottom. Um, I use it, I drag it around, and it makes it super easy instead of having to pick up a container, which I do use very large pots all the time, those plastic containers that trees come in. I use those a lot, but the Fiskars container is really nice because I can just drag it around the property and I don't have to worry about it breaking or anything like that. The one that I've had currently, I've had for about three years now, and the only problem that I have with it is that the handle's popped off, which is totally fine because I just grab it by the edge of it and it has no holes, no tears, um, no other damage than the handles being gone, and it's holding up totally fine. So highly recommend a Fiskars hard bottom shelled pop-up container. It's really nice because you can put it away and it collapses into almost nothing at all. And what's really nice about this bag too is that it holds up to about 30 gallons worth of yard waste material. So that's a lot of product. It's a 30 gallon bag. So, and I shove that thing full. <laughs> so that is my number 10 of what every gardener needs in their garden. Number nine of what I think every gardener needs in their garden is a spearhead spade shovel. It has been a great, great tool to have in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have Freya right here. <laughs> um, the spearhead spade shovel has been a really good tool to have in the garden. My grandmother actually bought it for me and I was a little bit skeptical about it. Um, but it is so sharp and it just digs straight through the ground. It's been a really nice shovel to have. I have two other shovels. I have like your normal basic shovels that you just get like a flat one and then like one that's kind of pointed. But this spearhead one just digs into the ground so easy with almost no effort at all. It really makes digging holes in the garden super, super easy. It tears through little tiny roots that you need to tear through um, poor soil. We have super gravelly soil at the very back of our property and I can dig through that very, very easily with that spade head shovel. Number eight is an auger. And not just any auger, I think that you specifically need a hex head auger, which is the type of bit that goes into the drill. And so that's going to be at the end of the auger. That's the portion that goes into it. And specifically a hex head because those are the ones that are going to last. If you buy one of those cheap ones that have a more rounded head, you're gonna end up stripping the head on it and um, you just wasted $20 on a cheap auger. So I have one that I spent about $45 on. It's a power planter one and it's a small. I really like it. It's strong. It's so sturdy. Um, I've had it for about two years now and it gets the job done. So an auger is really, really great because it makes it so I can drill those holes into the ground when I don't want to get a shovel out. My only problem with augers is that it does fling the soil everywhere. So after I've already mulched a bed, it's a little hard to want to pull out the auger. I do still pull it out, but I just go really slow in those beds. Um, augers have really been a huge game changer. I was always using shovel for everything. And while using a shovel is nice and easy, especially when digging a big hole, uh, an auger is so fast. It takes no time and no effort at all to use an auger. The only problem is with an auger, you do need a drill. Um, I use the Ryobi cordless drill. And um, so while you're spending a good amount on the auger, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, I think they go up to like $120 for a good auger. You're also spending that on a drill. So it can be quite a pricey investment, um, but still I really do think it's worth it for the amount of time that you save and energy that you save rather than having to dig a hole for every little thing that you put in the garden. The seventh thing that I think every gardener needs in their garden is jute twine. Oh my gosh, we go through rolls and rolls of jute twine in our garden. I buy it usually about two or three rolls a year and we will go through the entire thing. I like the jute twine because it is soft where it's not going to damage the plants and by the end of the year, 
all those things that I've needed to tie up. The jute has already started to fall apart, so it's not plastic, leaving little bits of plastic all throughout my garden. The jute twine will disintegrate, and if I cut it and just leave it there, it doesn't matter. It'll, it'll go right back into the garden. It's just jute. So um, we go through a couple rolls each year. I really love that stuff. And it's not too hard on the plant when you're tying up your plant up to something else. So um, if you do end up using things like rope or whatever, you can end up usually damaging whatever it is that you're tying up because rope is a little bit too hard. The rule of thumb with tying up plants is that you want to tie up the plant with something softer than what the plant is. So while you think that like the membrane of a plant is actually pretty soft, um, so you wanna use something soft and I think jute twine has that softness to it. So we use a lot of it and I think every gardener needs a bit of that in their garden also. The sixth tool that I think every gardener should have is a folding rake, a collapsible rake, especially if you live somewhere where you don't have a ton of storage, we love our collapsible rake. That's the one that I reach for, for pretty much any project in the garden at all. Um, it's nice because I can get into little corners and little areas that I need to get a rake into, or I can extend it all the way out and I can pick up huge loads of things. The one that I picked up was actually relatively cheap and it's been great. We've had it for about two years now and um, I have really abused it. I didn't think that it would hold up to picking up large amounts of debris and plant product in the garden and it does a really really good job on that so folding rake everyone needs one of those that has been a huge game changer we have those big huge bulky rakes and they take up so much room in the garden and sometimes they're nice here and there but then when i have to go into a flower bed and rake things out I can't without damaging plants. So the folding rake is nice because you can like choose the size that you need the rake to be, which like I think like the small size is like this big. So it's actually really, really perfect. Number five that I think every gardener needs is a handsaw. We have one that I love. I use it for anything that's bulky. I use it at the end of the season to cut my dahlias down, to cut sunflowers down, all kinds of different things that I don't want to accidentally ruin a pair of clippers or loppers or anything like that. I don't want to damage the blade, so I reach for my handsaw. It is so incredibly fast. They're so sharp. We actually ended up getting our very first one, which was about a $10 one, and we got it three years ago to go cut down a Christmas tree, and I was shocked. I was like, okay, well, it's gonna take me an hour to cut this tree down. I cut it down in like seconds. So since then I have one of the Corona hand saws, and it is amazing. They're so fast, they are so sharp. Perfect for like trimming trees, or like I said, cutting things down at the very end of the season. Highly recommend having a handsaw. They take little energy to be able to cut things down. And um, it's a great garden tool. That's why it's higher up on the list. <laughs> the fourth thing that I think every single gardener needs is a really good watering can. And I'm telling you right now, it is worth the investment in a good watering can. I have bought so many of those cheap little plastic ones. Um, and by the end of the season, they are sunburned and the plastic is brittle and they are falling apart. The one that I currently have was quite an expense, but it is so worth it. What I love is that the head changes out. It is by Burgeon and Ball and um, it's a kind of a luxury watering can. I think it's a very like classy English looking watering can and it's worth the money on it. I've had it now for four years and I use that to go and fertilize all of my containers every single week. Those are, that's the watering can that Brent and I use to water any pots or anything like that. It's just a really nice watering can. The spout on it is turnable. So we have it facing up. So that way when you tilt it, it kind of like pours out really nicely and you can get different heads for it. Um, should you need to change the head out for a different style if you don't like the rainfall that it creates. So um, a really nice watering can. I think everyone should invest in one of those for their garden. Number three for the garden is probably the one that everybody needs. Like these last three are the three things that if you're gonna splurge on garden tools to like help you in the garden, these are the three to splurge on. So number three is Gorilla Cart. Um, I am shocked at how amazing this thing is. We have the old version and it's been since improved upon, which um, I don't even know how you can improve upon it. I guess maybe there's like a few things and that's what they did. So the Gorilla Cart, we use this thing almost daily. These last, these last three are the ones that we actually use pretty much daily. 
And so the Gorilla Cart is really nice. The one that we have, I bought the smaller one and I probably should have bought the next size up, which is medium. I would say for any normal home gardener, I would buy the small one. But because we do so much gardening and um, because I'm doing it so much for YouTube that I should have bought one more up. But this thing has been used and abused. This thing, we use it to bring groceries in. We use it to haul the dog food from the car to the back door. I use it to haul the chicken feed from the driveway all the way back there to the chicken coop. Um, my plants, we used it to put all the soil in our backyard for the flower farm. This thing has been a lifesaver. We have a wheelbarrow. I prefer the Gorilla Cart 100% over the wheelbarrow. The wheelbarrow, you know, you gotta use both hands and you have to pay attention to what you're doing. And if you don't, it could tip over. The Gorilla Cart has four wheels. You pull it right behind you. It's like a little wagon and um, it's amazing. I, I love the Gorilla Cart. I, I will be buying another one. Ours, we have really abused. It holds up to a certain amount and we continue to push it past that certain poundage that it can hold and um, we abuse it. So I'll be buying another one here very, very soon. Um, the one that we have, we've had for almost four years now, and it's been a huge, huge help in our garden and just at our home with like everyday needs that we need to like go get something from the shed. And then we just haul everything up to where it needs to go. Number two, and I'm sure you guys can guess these last two, number two is a hose link. And I am shocked at how much this thing has changed my life in the garden. You know, I hate reeling up hoses. My next door neighbor, she'd gone out of town and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not winding your hose up. I'm not doing that. We have two of them on the property and they are amazing. It's just, it's they're clean, they're simple. You yank it, your hose goes back up into the system and you don't have to worry about it. We've had ours for coming up on four years now and um, no problems at all with them. They have been so amazing, huge, huge help in the garden. We use one of them gets used multiple times a day. We don't have irrigation here on our property. So one of them that's in our backyard, we end up pulling it out and it gets pulled out and we attach a sprinkler to it. And um, we use their quick disconnects that they have. They have some really nice disconnects. So one of them is on the sprinkler head and one of them is on my um, watering wand. And so that way I can interchange them as I need. <sighs> if you're gonna invest in anything, invest in Gorilla Cart and a hose link. Oh my gosh, huge, huge, huge time savers for the garden. And then you just give it a yank and your hose is put away and it's, it's not a hose all the way lying around the garden. I love my hose link. I will never have anything bad to say about hose link ever. They've been amazing and the customer service is amazing. Um, I've had to deal with them a couple times, just a few questions. They either send out a replacement part or they um, will just fix the problem. They, they are so, so amazing. Absolutely love my hose link. Number one, and number one is probably my favorite thing in the garden. And it is the one thing that I also use multiple times a day and it will not break your bank. I officially have five pairs of these. <laughs> they, these are my favorite. These are the Coronas. What are they? They, they are the AG4940. They are the curved tip snips and they are amazing. They're very, very sharp. Um, I don't clean my clippers. I don't clean my tools that well. I will once a year, I will sharpen them and I will try to get any of the gunk off and the rust off. And that is it. They get once a year. And other than that, they are out of luck. I ended up buying one pair of these because I had a very, very expensive pair of clippers get stolen from me. And I said, okay, that is it. I am no longer buying expensive clippers or pruners or any of those things ever again. Um, because I lose them and or they get stolen. And so I bought these ones. They were on sale. They were like $11. They're almost always on sale every single time I check. I think normally they're like 20 bucks off of Amazon and they're almost always on sale for like 11 or $12. So I officially have five pairs of them and they're the best things ever. I have two of them on this table. I have one pair that I keep inside, one pair that stays in the shed and one that's usually at the end of a flower bed somewhere. <laughs> but they are so, so worth it. Um, 
and I'll probably continue to buy more and more of them. I wouldn't mind having a stockpile of 20 or 30 of these guys, just so that way I never have to wonder, oh, where are my little clippers at? And I mean, you think you spend $70 on a nice pair of little pruners, or you spend $12 on a pair of these little guys right here, which they do come in a straight tip also. I just prefer the curved tip because it makes it really easy when doing things like pruning, you can kind of get in there and you can really reach and then it just barely just has a nice little curve to it. I, I prefer the curved and then they just latch by this little thing down here. They have a nice little spring to them. Really, really easy thing. And those just latch on like that. They've been amazing. Best $11 I've ever spent on a garden tool. This is, this is probably the cheapest garden tool that I've talked about today. <laughs> so highly recommend if you're gonna buy anything off the list, buy these, these are the Corona ones. These are the oldest pair that I have. These are the first ones that I bought and um, they've held up all season. And I, I leave them outside in the rain <laughs> all year long. So that is gonna be it for my list of 10 items that every single gardener needs. I hope that it helped you guys out. I hope that gives you a list of where to start with, what tools you should have in your garden, or maybe you're an established gardener and you have now found a way to make gardening a little bit easier for you. So that is gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.